So today it's freezing out, humid and cold. I really need to set up a system in my boat to heat myself this winter. And right now, this is my electrical situation. It's a horrendous electrical situation. I just have this cable coming into the boat um, from the shore and it's not very proper. What I'm hoping to do is connect a 30 amp service to my boat. The marina owner, Greg, brought me this. It's a plug. And that is going to run to this control panel with a bunch of uh, breakers on it. And I'm gonna plug this in from shore, plug this into the shore power, plug this into my boat, and then I'm gonna run actual proper cable inside my boat so that I can get outlets, like these 120 volt outlets, throughout my boat and I can run a proper um, oil filled heater so that I'm not so cold. Um, I will walk you through the process as I grow and learn, you will as well. So the first step in all of this is deciding where to put the inlet for the power. Um, you're not supposed to be more than two feet of cable away from the inlet, from the power inlet. So you have to decide on your boat where you'd like to do that. Pepita. All right, so I've cut it. I have the proper part now. It is the proper part. That's what I'm gonna install. An inch and a half, I would say. And we're gonna send this sucker right through. Stainless seal. It is very easily marked. We have green, we have black, and we have white. There we are. And that's our plug. And I can theoretically just screw it down and it's locked. So this is what it looks like. This is a strain preventer. So basically the cables go through this. I screw the cables down in this little pad and the cables won't get pulled out of that nor will anyone get shocked. You don't need to Cut it back too much. You just need a bit of wire exposed. I would say about uh, about an inch inch of copper wire exposed. Looking at the depth. So I was told that you are always supposed to use stranded cable on a boat. You never use solid cable. Um, that was what I was told by a marine electrician that I trust very much. So. I would recommend following that advice. I have come to realize that I need to attach the cables to this thing before I drill it into the wall. Amazing, right? Uh, amazing. A lot easier at least. And we install it again. So, because this is the um, line end, this is the load end, this is where I'm going to be plugging in my white power. My white, this is the, the neutral. This right here, this bolt here, is going to be my live line one. 
and this is going to be my ground. You know, I did something that I don't really love. I used these blue crimpons, crimpon connectors, which are for 14 gauge wire. And this is 10 gauge wire. And you know, all night last night I was thinking, man, that's not right. I should do it right. This is gonna sit there forever. Why would I use 14 gauge crimpons when I can use and easily purchase 10 gauge crimpons? So first step today is to take those suckers off and put on these 10 gauge crimp on terminal connectors. Now I'm going to start running my cables. Um, I'm gonna run 12 gauge wire throughout the boat because I wanna create 120 amp circuit that will power um, a heater. And if I wanna plug in an electric blanket or any other sort of um, power consuming item, this is the circuit that I'm going to use when I'm on shore. All right, so I've got a bunch of wire run under there already, so I'm going to use some zip ties and zip tie the new wire onto it. Now we're somewhere in here. Let's see where. smarter than that man than me once said you can't stretch wire but you can cut it shorter so here we are at the terminal what I'm going to do is give it a bit more than I think I need this right here is probably what I need but I'm gonna give it another foot so I'm gonna cut it here I'll actually let you watch here we are Cutting the, oh, just as I was about to cut it, I'm going to cut it six inches longer. There we go. Wire cut. Not actually cutting all the way through. I'm just creasing it so that I can rip it open without cutting the wires underneath. Hi. So I'm gonna cut the hole right here. First, I've got to mark it. I want it to sit out pretty much, pretty much like this. Here's our outlet. Brass, silver, green. Brass is black. Now we Plug in the 15 amp service, and we're good to go.
that's the 30 amp. Okay, we're plugged in. Now, hopefully nothing blows up. It's on. Now we go to the boat and check. I don't see anything. No power. So the final bit to the equation that I didn't realize is when you plug in the shore power on the boat and also on the pedestal, you need to push it in and twist it a bit to the right and it'll lock in place. And that's what I wasn't doing. And now you see that little red dot? That means we are functional people. We are functional. I've got, I've got my phone plugged in down here. It's charging. I've got the speaker plugged in over there. It can play music whenever it wants. It's on a 20 amp circuit, motherfucker. Here is the finished motherboard. I'm not going to touch it because it is live, but you'll notice the white wires down here. Those are the wires that are going to the outlets on the boat. These are the grounds that are going, so coming from the outlets on the boat, coming from the outlets on the boat, coming from the outlets on the boat, that black wire there and that black wire there. Those are operated from the switches on the front of this board. This black wire coming in and that white wire coming in, those two are coming from the um, shore power. And the ground for those also runs to here. Um, that is the wired motherboard. The mothership. I just love that word. And everything is operational. Okay, that's closed. Just gotta, gotta be careful around spicy electricity. Gotta be careful. <sighs> Nobody open that. Does everybody see this? It is a beautiful heater. And it's pumping the heat out. And I'm sitting on the toilet. Just absorbing. Absorbing nothing but warmth. This is all thanks to the marina owner, Gregory, who has been a huge help. And not only understanding the process of electri electrifying a boat, but also um, because he helped support me by donating this lovely heater and the electric 30 amp cord and the power, the um, electrical box and lots and lots of wisdom, lots of wisdom. So thank you, Gregory, very much, and thank you for watching.